Two men sat on a small bench in the corner of the locker room, separated from most of the players and well-wishers by a pile of pads and skates. In the center of the room some of the Maple Leafs were drinking champagne from the Stanley Cup, which few hockey writers expected them to win. The Terry Sachuk and Johnny Bauer, the goalies who'd done the most to make the celebration possible, were smoking cigarettes and recovering from the physical ailments that are part of life for aging men playing a young man's game. Sawchuk had played one of the best games of his 20-year pro career to beat the Montreal Canadiens 3-1, as the Leafs clinched the Stanley Cup in Game 6. Bauer had put in two big games the week before, that now had trouble walking because of a pulled groin. Someone asked Sawchuk about his most dramatic save of the game, a desperate lunge to grab the puck just as it trickled onto the goal line, but he'd faced so many shots that he couldn't remember. The fast skating Canadians had taken 41 shots, most of them from close range. But somehow Sawchuk had stopped all but one, and kept the Leafs in the game until they took the lead with two second period goals. Bauer had put on comparable performances in the Leafs' first two victories of the series, including a 60 save, double overtime effort in the pivotal third game, which the Leafs won 3-2. Sawchuk and Bauer were the most prominent members of the seven Leafs players aged 36 or over, five of whom had already helped head coach Punch Imlac win three Stanley Cups. Imlac kept his veterans around despite critics who said their abilities were gone. The Vets had failed to get the Leafs past the Stanley Cup semi-final rounds in the previous two years. In the 1966-67 season, during a horrendous 10-game losing streak, the Leafs dropped into fifth place and were in danger of missing the playoffs. But with some needed help from younger players like Pete Stemkowski and Jim Pappen, the Leafs finished in third place. Then they upset the Chicago Blackhawks in their six-game Stanley Cup semi-final. Against the heavily favored Canadians, and Lack's old men fully vindicated his faith in them. 36-year-old Marcel Pronovo was the best defenseman in the series. 37-year-old Tim Horton had a bad opening game, won by Montreal 6-2, and 41-year-old Alan Stanley had an awful game 4, won by Montreal by the same score, but both veterans came back to play important roles in the Leafs' victories, and 39-year-old Red Kelly and 36-year-old Captain George Armstrong called on remembered skills and unflagging courage to execute big plays, but the veterans didn't win the cup alone. The line of Bob Pulford, Pete Stamkowski, and Jim Pappen was the team's best, and Dave Keon was awarded the Conn Smythe Trophy as playoff MVP. He led the club in its tireless forechecking of the speedy Canadians and held together a line completed by Armstrong and Frank Mahovlich. Still, the Leafs might conceivably have beaten the Canadians without Keon or Pappen, but they certainly couldn't have won without Sawchuk or Bauer, and it would be hard to imagine a pair of heroes less alike in their approach to the game. Sawchuk had been an established NHL star for 17 years. Bob Bauer spent 12 of his first 13 seasons in the minors. The two goalies complemented one another perfectly against the Habs. Sawchuk couldn't make up for his team's overall deficiencies in the opener, so Bauer got the start in Game 2, and he was brilliant in a 3-0 victory. In Game 3, the Leafs were less than perfect, but Bauer bailed them out. With the score tied at 2 after the second, Bauer had to make a series of extraordinary saves in the third. He and Habs rookie Rogi Vashon, who also played well until Habs coach Toe Blake replaced him with Gump Worsley during Game 5, matched superb saves in the first overtime, with the Leafs taking the game 3-2 in double overtime. Bauer's season ended in the warm-up before the next game, when he kicked out at a puck and pulled a muscle. Sawchuk was rushed in, and proceeded to play his worst game of the playoffs. On four of the Canadians' six goals he seemed almost immobile. The delighted Habs returned home envisioning two more high-scoring wins and their third straight cup. Although he denied any conscious change, Sawchuk was a different player in Game 5. The Leafs started so slowly that Sawchuk had to challenge almost every Canadian's forward during the first period. He kept moving out of the net, scrambling to the ice, and somehow stopping almost everything. The Leafs, who might easily have trailed by 3 or 4, went off the ice with a 1-1 tie. After tightening up their defensive game, the Leafs coasted to a 4-1 win. Sawchuk was even better in the final game, stopping 17 shots in the first period to keep the game scoreless until Kelly could set up young Ron Ellis for the first goal at 6.25 of the second. Half a dozen unbelievable saves later, the Leafs added to their lead thanks to a goal by Jim Pappen just before the period ended. Once again the Leafs clamped down, checking diligently and concentrating only on stopping the Canadians. Dick Duff scored for the Habs early in the third to make it 2-1, but Sawchuk held off the Canadians' charge the rest of the way. When Toe Blake pulled Gump Worsley with 55 seconds left, Imlac characteristically fielded a defensive platoon made up of four of his old men and the slightly younger Pulford. Eight seconds later, Armstrong scored on the open net to clinch the Stanley Cup, with the exception of the wildly exciting, wide-open Game 3. The Leafs' wins were typical masterpieces of rugged checking, defense, and superb goaltending. At the time, cynics around the NHL complained the Leafs' cautious philosophy produced boring hockey. In response, the ever-quotable Imlac laughed and wondered aloud if Leafs fans were bored by the team's Stanley Cup championship. That's all for this look back at the 1967 Maple Leafs. Let me know if you think the Leafs have a shot at finally winning another cup. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to support the channel.